Hello world and welcome to a new series. Today we're going to be covering Applied Energistics 2. This is a very, very long tutorial this is going to be as there's many new things when it comes to Applied Energistics in 1.19.2. Other things to note in this series is that we are going to be using a series of add-ons as well as the base vanilla Applied Energistics 2. So of course we've got Applied Energistics 2, we've got AE Additions, AE Infinity Booster, AE2 Things, AE2 Wireless Terminal, AE Applied mechanistics i think i'm pronouncing that right and applied cooking so to start off with we are going to need a myriad of basic resources that are added to the game when it comes to applied energistics too the first thing is going to be these things here certus quartz clusters and when we break these we are going to get ourselves some certus quartz so say we go in the world and we find these clusters around here what we can do is just break these with any pickaxe and these are going to give us our certus quartz now these clusters they are going to grow the exact same way as vanilla minecraft amethyst would so in the world you are going to be able to find these different variant tiers of budding certus quartz now the easiest way to find these is going to be by finding a meteorite but first let's go over what these budding quartz certus quartz actually are there are four different tiers of these budding quartz we have got damaged chipped flawed and flawless they don't really do anything besides tell you how much damage your block initially has on top of that is that you've got four tiers of crystal growth as you can see here starting at level one all the way up to level four level four is what's going to give you these certus quartz clusters however if you break something a little bit lower in tier if we go into creative mode if we break something a little bit lower what we're actually going to get is these certus quartz pieces of dust as well now you do need dust as well so try and keep some of that However, you are able to craft this Certus Quartz Dust as well um, in the Inscriber, which we'll come to later. Now, say you find these in the world, just like with the Amethyst ones, you are going to want to silk touch these up. Otherwise, you, they are going to give you something a little bit different. If, it doesn't matter if it's the flawed or it's the damaged. It, depending on what you have, they will turn into just a regular old Certus Quartz block. Now, these Certus Quartz blocks can be turned into Certus Quartz as well, so you don't have to use the silk touch, but I recommend keeping them as they are. However, something cool you can do is that if we get ourselves some water here and we get ourselves a charged Certus Quartz, now I'm going to show you how to make those later. If we throw these down together in a piece of water, here we've got ourselves the uh, ordinary Certus Quartz and then we have ourselves the charged. Throw them together as long as I don't pick them up. Throw them together and it, what it's going to do is now create a brand new damaged budding. So that's where we can start things off. Now you can continue to upgrade this. You can throw a damaged in here and then you can throw another charged quartz in here. That will turn it next to the chipped and then you can do it again to the flawed. Now you cannot make a flawless one however. You can only find those in the world and I don't know how fast those degrade. So in order to find a meteorite how are we going to do this? We're first going to need the meteorite compass. Now the way of crafting this is a bit ludicrous but the first thing we're going to need is a a charger a charger is made using five pieces of iron and two pieces of copper and this is basically a way of charging many many different things inside of applied energistics too however we're going to need a way to power this now ae2 doesn't really have a way of powering things really there are only two ways or technically three ways of powering it the first one and the automatic way is by using the vibration chamber this is made with an energy acceptor uh, seven pieces of iron and one furnace and this is basically a coal power generator you put coal in there and it will start creating ae per tick which is uh, applied energy per tick i imagine and then in order to make the energy acceptor we just do this with some quartz glass copper and iron ingots this will give you our energy acceptor now in order to make the, qu uh, the quartz glass you're going to need regular glass and then some of that surface quartz dust which i talked about earlier now the energy acceptor is pretty cool so anything inside of applied energistics 2 what you can do is pipe in your desired rf source whether that's from mechanism or thermal expansion or any other type of rf making mod the other side you can have as ae2 uh, power if you use the appropriate cables which we'll go more into later but to start off with we were probably going to want to use the vibrating chamber just to keep everything inside this mod now in order to get the meteorite compass we're first going to need a regular old compass now in the charger can only be powered from either the bottom or the top it cannot be done on the sides so you must have it on top of your vibrating chamber now the vibration chamber can export power on all of its sides but obviously the charger only accepts on one side so all we do is throw our little compass in here and as you can 
can see instantly straight away it is transported into or transformed into the meteorite compass uh, so now we have this compass now for me I'm in a super flat world so it's just spinning slowly because there aren't technically any meteorites in the world so we're gonna have to go to a regular world in order to show that but before we do that now as well you can also power the charger with a regular hand crank which is made using just six and copper and all you have to do is just hold right click on the crank and it will slowly start charging up our charger it takes a bit longer of course but it stops you needing to make the vibration charger and as well as that get some coal so before you even make a base you'll be able to get a compass so here we are now in a regular old minecraft world and i have happened upon one of these meteorites these are going to spawn all over your world you'll probably come across them before you even make this meteorite compass unless you're speed running it of course and they will look something like this they won't always be in a lava pool like this they can just be completely dry they could be in the ocean they could actually be underground slightly um but you'll know you'll find them as with your meteorite compass as you can see here depending on which way i turn it points directly towards it now the closer i get to it eventually when i'm right on top of it it's going to start spinning rapidly this means that you have found it it's right here or right beneath you or even right above you if there's sky islands or something now inside of here you are going to get many different resources hello weird scientist man um the first thing you can see is that you get this sky stone sky stone is actually going to be important for later on inside the pack and for some early game things as well such as making the controller so i recommend you mine up as much of this sky stone as possible or be very close by to it but now inside of this mine uh, inside of this meteorite we are going to find a couple of different things it can be quite deep sometimes you've got to go right to the middle but there's a chance that you're going to find this and here we have have got a load of our little crystals here now these crystals again just like amethyst they are going to start growing on all sides so right off the bat you're going to want to have to start all of like making sure every side is on the surface that way clusters can actually start growing now we have many different types here see we actually found a flawless this time there's a damaged another flawless damaged flawless we've got very lucky here regular certus block and wow so many flaws that's actually incredible now in the center here we have got a mysterious cube now the mysterious cube is going to give you some very important ingredients um but first we're going to need obviously a pickaxe and i need to be in survival mode so when we break this down we're going to get some brand new items four items in total and these are going to be imperative in order to start your uh, applied energistics experience here we have got four different types of presses all for the inscriber we've got calculation engineering logic and silicon now these are going to be all very important but as of right this second we don't need them we're here for the surface quartz so let's go back into our super flat world so now we're back in this world let's actually show off how these inscribers work now these inscribers are going to be used to make each of these different types of circuits down here every single one of these circuits are going to need to be created in order to continue inside of this mod now the first one the calculation press you're going to use surface quartz in order to make printed calculation circuits the engineering press is going to use diamonds in order to make printed engineering circuits and for the logic press you're going to use gold to make logic circuits the last thing is the silicon press which you're going to use silicon in order to make printed silicon now silicon is made by simply smelting surface quartz dust in a regular furnace to get you silicon as you see here now in order to actually make all these different things we're going to also need the inscriber the inscriber is made with two sticky pistons five iron ingots and a piece of copper and you're going to get one of these and this needs to be powered as well so again we're using the vibration chamber here and just to demonstrate we're going to take our inscriber calculation press here and a piece of surface quartz crystal and now these have their own specific slots you can't actually place them in the wrong place really uh, these two are for either type of inscriber it doesn't matter which one it's in and then this one is where you're going to want to have your ingredients so we can have this here and you can see it will start going to percentage um, now as you can see here they can go in either slot but Generally, I like to go in the top slot here. And there we go, our first printed calculation circuit. Now, the inscriber can make other things as well. Inside the inscriber, you can get certus quartz into certus quartz dust. You can get ender pearls into ender dust, flux crystals, which we haven't covered yet, into flux dust, and the sky stone into sky stone dust. Now, this is going to be used a little bit later on. Now, using each of these printed circuits, we can combine them with the printed silicon and a piece of redstone in order to make a logic processor, engineering processor, and calculation processor. So, we'll just demonstrate these quickly inside with the calculation circuit. We're going to want to remove our press we're going to want to have this one at the top the silicon at the bottom and the redstone in the middle and then it'll start doing its craft now eventually we will be able to automate this but there is some very important information we need to learn when it comes to doing this importing it wise this is very very important when it comes to directional inputs on top 
will give you the top slot. This top slot here must be inserted through the top of the machine. This bottom slot here must be inserted through the bottom of the machine. And this slot here must be pointed through either the back, front or left hand side. Then the output must come out of the right hand side. It's going to be very finicky, but there are ways of automating this, which we'll show later on. So at this point now, you are going to have yourself some calculation processes. You're going to have some self, some logic processes and engineering processes, as well as some certus quartz crystals here. And this is where we should probably try getting some charged certus quartz. Now, the reason we want to get charged certus quartz is actually in order to make fluix crystals, which is what we have over here. Now, in order to charge your certus quartz, it's very simple. You just simply take your certus quartz crystal and throw it in the charger. And almost instantly, as you can see there, it turns into our charged certus quartz. Now, taking the charged certus quartz, some regular nether quartz and some redstone, we can throw this into water, similar with our cluster blocks over there, and we can turn this into our fluix crystals. Now, this doesn't always happen this fast, but uh, you just leave it in there for a little bit and then it will start exploding, as you can see here. You'll roughly get two stacks worth, since we used a stack of charged and a sack of nether quartz, we'll end up getting roughly two quartz. There we go. It's exactly two stacks there, as you can see. And these are going to be basically all of our ingredients that we're going to need for our time with Applied Energistics 2. Now, the first time you make Fluix Crystals, you're going to find out very quickly that you're going to need a lot of these Fluix Crystals. So the first things I would actually recommend you build are the Growth Accelerator, the Crystal Growth Accelerator, as well as a Certus Quartz Wrench. The Certus Quartz Wrench is made with simple five Certus Quartz in an X pattern. Now, this can also be made with Nether Quartz as well to get yourselves a Nether Quartz Wrench. Now, the Nether Quartz Wrench is very, or the quartz wrench in general is very simple it's just used to basically rotate machines however you would like or if you shift right click you can pick them up very very simple here now the crystal growth accelerator is made using two pieces of quartz glass four iron ingots two fluix me glass cables and a fluix block now i will show how these are made very quickly so inside of here we can just get four of these fluix crystals to make a block and then the fluix glass table we need two of the fluix crystals with a quartz fiber and a quartz fiber is made with regular glass and certus quartz dust now the reason why you want to be doing this is because obviously waiting for these clusters to grow it takes a very long long time now what you want to do is place this down you can see we have this little sort of button on the top and there is also this little button on the bottom these are where your inputs and outputs are for power on this machine so what we want to do is actually place this to be uh, looking towards us here if we can actually get this to spin around the right way there we go and now you can see that this purple glow has started coming on we've got some lightning here what this does is when we have a accelerator pointed directly at our budding quartz here, it's going to speed up the tick rate of growth of all these crystals as you can see here. Now, the more accelerators you have on here, the quicker it's going to grow. Now, of course, the more you put on here, the less sides you're actually going to have growing crystals. But say you had up to five different ones on here, the top slot is going to be growing very, very quickly. So here I've made a system of what that would actually look like. As you can see here, it's all powered from every single side, including the underneath. And these crystal clusters are starting to grow a lot quicker. And the time that I've took me to build this and wait for it to grow, this one is only just finished growing three with uh, the one single one. In fact, this one's already finished. So you could make this growing very, very quickly. But now here's the real reason you are here. You want to be able to digitize all of your items. We now have everything we need in order to make this stuff work. Now, first thing we're going to need is cells. There are many different types of cells in this, and they are varying in sizes of storage, as well as that you can also get fluid cells. Today, we're going to start off with the level one item cell, which is only 1K, as you can see here. Now, this is made using a quartz crystal, uh, two quartz glass, sorry, three redstone dust, three iron ingots, and a 1K ME storage component. Now, this is going to make ourselves our storage cell right off the bat. But what you can do is actually make just the housing without having the component. And then with the housing, you can put any different type together you want inside of your inventory, as you see here as well as when you have it crafted you can just shift right click and it's going to take it out of your inventory and actually apparently destroy the cell a housing cell itself oh no it just stacked back up that's what it did now to make the components we're going to need a logic compressor four certus quartz crystals and redstone dust and this is going to give us our one component now these cells are can be used in two different ways to start off with i would recommend when you're very very starting and you just want to digitize things as quickly as possible is that you make an me chest an me chest is made using two pieces of ingots copper ingots 
two Fluix ME glass cables, two regular glass and a ME terminal. And when you slap this chest down, this will first need to be powered where we have our vibration chamber here and inside we place our ME storage cell. Now I recommend you make some more of this glass and another terminal as this is a way of actually seeing inside of your cell here. Now the cell as you can see here when we hover over it, it says that it's got 0 out of 1024 bytes used and 0 out of 63 types used. What does this mean? For every single block in Minecraft, this could give a value of bytes or data or whatever you want to say. Now each different block is going to be a different type. So this 1k storage cell can hold 63 different types of items. Now the more types you have inside your storage cell, the less stacks of each type you will be able to put in here so if you put just say cobblestone in here you could put a lot of stuff in here now i'm going to put this up here on screen from the wiki directly where it's basically going to say to us that if we had a 1k storage system we could hold 127 different items 127 different stacks sorry of the same item but if we had all 63 different types opened we could have 65 stacks in total inside of here so you roughly half the amount you could get inside of this cell if you have multiple different types now the more the bigger cell you have the more stacks you'll get of one type as well as the more stacks you'll get with 63 different types so that is why you want to really jump into this as quickly as possible but you want to make sure that you only put inside of here what you really want to keep sort of in low storage amounts if you want to have all let's say thousands of cobblestone i'd recommend using something like functional drawers or storage drawers and then use me terminals with that but we'll show more of that later now this is great and all uh we can actually add multiple chests to this if we want we could just have a big array of these me chests each with a different drive inside which is great but it's not exactly the best way of going around things long term but before we move on let's go over the terminal a little bit more inside the terminal we can see that we have this large open space um we can put anything we want or take anything we want out whenever we would like so we can just throw this all in here and as we start filling up we can see that our storage disk or cell in here is slowly filling up it tells us what's inside we've used 72 bytes already out of 1024 and we have four different types in here because we've got four different items inside of here we have a couple of different things we can search so if we just wanted to look for stone we could type in stone and here we have regular stone and deep slate red stone or anything that it's contained in is going to search up now you can right click on here to clear the grid and it also tells you exactly the same way it would in JEI. You can use the at symbol to search by mod, the asterisk to do by specific IDs and the hash to find different tags. Now inside of here as well we've got other different things. We can now order these by name, we can order them by stacks of items, number of items and we can order them by the mod as well. Obviously this is all just a Minecraft. Um, I like to personally have this by number of items and then I change this one here to descending. I like to see what I have at the most at the very top. That's just my personal opinion. We also have in here stored and craftable. This means when you get into auto crafting later on in this series, you can choose to have both everything you can craft and everything that's stored. You can have everything that's just stored and nothing that's craftable or everything that is craftable. I like to always keep it on stored and craftable. As well as that, as we know, we can actually store fluids in here as well. Now, unlike refined storage, you don't need a different grid for that. We can just do all of that inside the same terminal here. So as you can see, we can do fluids only. We can show everything, items only, and so on and so forth. Now, before we go into the settings, we also have terminal size, so we can basically go for small or large. I like to have a larger area, personally. Now, uh, inside here, we have got our settings. Now, the settings in here are basically how you want to configure things inside of this. So when you want to search for things, for example, do you want to search using the A bar that's up here, or do you want to search during JEI? This can change everything here, so that means we can do all the JE stuff. I like to really use the AE stuff here, as you see here. Now, for later on, we've got here pin auto-crafted items to the first row. That means everything at the top here, if you want them auto-crafted, they will pop up in the very top grid, so you don't have to go searching for them or scrolling down, of course. Um, as well as that, we also have notified about finished crafting jobs. This requires a wireless terminal, but this is going to basically give you a little notification, basically saying, whatever you've chosen to auto-craft, it's now done with. Thank you. for, And it will just tell you. Then obviously we have automatically clear the terminal grid on close if applicable. Applicable. I got that word eventually. Basically, it's just going to clear everything out once you're finished with it. This more comes into later things. Now, when it comes to actual search stuff, we have search in tooltips, uh, which is something we do want. Um, it basically just 
tells you what the tooltips are. Very simple. We have Remember Last Search, which is off by default. But inside of here, if we typed in stone and then we came out of the system and then went back in, it would remember what we've just had in there before. If we had that turned off, every time we go into the system, it's going to completely disappear when we go back in. So for a fresh search, I like to have that on. Then we have autofocus. This is basically whether your terminal is going to be auto selected up here. By default, it will be auto selected, but uh, sometimes you might have to click on it if you have that turned off. And then we have sync with JEI, which you probably can guess as we type inside the E terminal, JEI is going to type as well, which is very handy for if you, even if you're not looking for it in your system, you could learn how to make it from inside your system. Now, the annoying thing is when you're typing in here, you won't be able to press R over here. So you do have to click off the search bar of course first. Otherwise you're going to start spamming R in the top corner here. And that's all the settings when it comes to this. Now, if you want to get out of the settings, you don't have to press escape out the whole thing. You can just toggle back to the terminal like this. Now on the side, here we have got ourselves the slots for view cells. View cells are basically a way of filtering what you can see inside of your terminal here. We're not going to be covering that today, that'll be in a different episode. At the top here as well we have our crafting status, if we click on this, this is going to tell us our CPUs, what they're crafting and how we are auto crafting is going along. We don't have any auto crafting set up and that will not be in today's episode. Now I'll show you how to make these other components, we've already gone over the Fluix glass cable, so as we know that is the quartz fibre and the uh, Fluix ME glass fiber using the Fluix crystals. But to make the terminal, we are going to need an annihilation core, illuminated panel, and a formation core. Now, these are made first the illuminated panel. You're going to need three pieces of quartz glass, some glowstone, redstone, and an ingot. And this is going to give you actually three of these illuminated panels. To make the formation core, you're going to need a logic processor, a Fluix dust, and a Certus quartz crystal. And this is going to give you two formation cores. And then it's the exact same for annihilation core, except with nether quartz. And you'll get two of these as well. So now we know the ME chest is a very basic way of digitizing all of your items. But now let's go into something more advanced of what you're mainly going to be using. And that is with the ME controller. This is made using some skystone block. This is made by taking your regular skystone that you found by the meteorite and smelting it into skystone block. You're then going to need four Fluix crystals and an engineering processor to make your controller. Now the controller must be powered, which is why we've got ourselves a vibration chamber here. And then you're also going to need a terminal with some cable on it in order to see inside it. Now the controller itself cannot hold any items. As you can see here, I can't actually put anything inside of here. But just so you know, because it's the terminal, everything inside of here is the same. In order to actually store things in here, what we can do is still use an ME chest if we wanted to. If we put an ME chest here with a uh, nice little drive inside of it, we would be able to to access it through this but the better way is by using a me drive this is made with two pieces of glass cable two engineering processors and four ingots and this is a way of actually holding up to what's that 10 different drives and here we go i've now installed up to 10 different drives so now we have 1024 bytes times 10 with 63 different items for each so that's 630 different items we can now hold in here now they will always try and do from top to bottom left to right in order to store things but every time you add a new item in here say this filled up to 63 bytes sorry 63 types but the bytes weren't all used up it will go on to the next one to use your next type in the system now the last thing which is on the me chest and on the priority this is to do with um, basically auto crafting and where it's going to where your auto crafting is going to take or put resources depending on its priority so as it says here Higher priorities will obviously go first on insertion and in extraction, lower priorities will come first. Now that's going to be pretty much everything when it comes to your first, very first ME system. Uh, now we're just going to quickly go over the different types of cells. Obviously we've got item storage and fluid storage and the way they rank up is in 1K, 4K, 16K, 64K and 256K. And this goes the same for fluids. Now fluids, they do have a slightly different crafting. They still use the same storage component, but the housing is using copper instead of iron. Besides that, everything is the same as you see here. Now, if we go back to our table that we threw up earlier, if we went all the way up to 64K, this is direct from the wiki, we would be able to store 8,128 stacks of one item. However, if we were to fill up all 63 different types inside of its cell, we would be able to make 4,160 stacks in total. So that's half the amount again 
that you could store in there in total if you have multiple different types. And 256 is going to go up again, but the wiki doesn't tell me exact numbers. But trust me, it's going to be a heck of a lot. Now, something to note with fluids. Fluids do act a little bit differently. You won't be able to hold 63 different stat types. Sorry, in each different one, you can only hold five different types. Just something to reference. Now, I hope that really hasn't blown your mind when it comes to applied energistics too. This is obviously a lot more confusing and a lot harder to get started with than it is with refined storage. But I hope that you managed to get all the information you needed from this and you're going to be well on your way to digitizing all of your items. We do need to talk a little bit more when it comes to storage such as channels and more things to do with bytes and P2P tunnels, autocraft. There's so many more things that are to come inside of AE2, which I'm really looking forward to sharing with you. But if this video did help you out in any way, shape or form, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe it would really help me out and ring the bell button to stay notified when this video goes live and if you found that this is a little bit too difficult for you and you would like something a little bit simpler in order to digitize your items then may i say go to my refined storage playlist on screen now as for this is a lot easier than this mod here but until next time guys take care